All right, folks. So in rather exciting news, Yesu has released a firmware update for the FTM 500 DR. You can find this firmware update on the Yesu website. You want to go here to the product page for the 500 DR and you want to click on the files tab. And once you do that, you want to scroll all the way down to bottom and then you see amateur radio slash software. And there's a couple of different files here. The first one is for the FTM 500 EXP firmware, and this is the export radio firmware. We're not interested, not interested in that. Um, the second one down is the 500DR uh, DE, and this is the USA firmware. So you want to download this to your downloads folder, and then you want to unzip it. We're going to take a look and see what that looks like in a minute. Below that is the FTM 500R DRDE update firmware information, and we want to take a look at that. So uh, I downloaded that, and then when I take a look at it here, you should be able to see that on my screen, you get the um, 8.1.23 is the release date, the FTM 500 DRDE firmware update information. And it tells you that the zip file contains these three different files, and it also contains this PDF below that. Uh, the one that we're concerned about is called main firmware V0106, and it says new here. The other two, the sub firmware and the DSP firmware have not changed. So there's no need to update those, but they're going to be in the folder anyway. And then we're going to take a look at this manual. It says we have two different versions. Uh, please make sure that you are using the right one. And it goes through a bunch of information about making sure that you're using the right one. So here in the United States where I bought my radio from a legit U.S. dealer, I am using the U.S. version and you should probably be doing the same thing. Uh, then when you scroll down here, it tells you a little bit about uh, the firmware files, but uh, we're not going to worry about that. But again, caution, make sure that uh, you confirm the model and the version of your transceiver before starting the update. Right? An incorrect firmware to transceiver may cause abnormal operation or failure. And then it talks about some of the improvements, and this is the exciting part. It fixed some bugs in the APRS, ti APRS time zone. I don't use APRS because APRS is how they get you. The next one says fix bugs in the DTMF tones. And I know that this has been an issue for some folks who do repeater control or use all-star um, nodes. And they require DTMF tones. So it's been a lot of hubbub about that. So this is really great that they, uh, they put this change out. And this is you already begin the if you already have the above listed firmware version it is not necessary to update the FTM 500 DRDE. So I'm going to show you how to check the firmware that you have, and it's unlikely that you would have this new version. And this says it will help you uh, increase your enjoyment. So that's all fantastic stuff. Let's take a look and see what's inside the folders. Okay, so here you can see the uh, files that are in the zip file download. The first one is the DSP firmware that we're not going to use. Uh, the second one is the manual. We're going to take a look at that one second. The third one is the main firmware, and then we have the sub firmware. So it's pretty easy stuff. If you can't unzip a file, you probably shouldn't be doing this firmware update. Okay, so here is the firmware upgrade manual. We're just going to take a quick look at this. Um, it tells you what it's about. It has some important notes here that you might want to take a look at. It says the transceiver settings must be reset immediately after updating the firmware. Resetting the transceiver will clear all memories and all setting data in the setting menu. Before updating the firmware, it is recommended that you back up the memory data saved in the memory channels and the setting data in the setting menu. And here it gives you information for how to do that. Then this is important regarding this firmware. Main sub and DSP firmware are available for the FTM 500 DR transceiver. Check the firmware version and perform the upgrades when needed. It tells you how to confirm the up, uh, firmware and it'll give you your versions. We're gonna do that in one second. And then it says SD card preparation, format or initialize the SD card in advance with the FDM 500 DR transceiver before updating the firmware. For information about SD cards that can be used on the formatting procedure, refer to using a micro SD memory card described in the operations manual. And here is the operations manual. And it says this transceiver only supports the following capacity of MD of, of micro SD and micro SD HC memory cards. 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32 gigabytes. 
And it says that uh, you memory cards formatted on other devices might not work appropriately. So we want to make sure that we do that correctly. And you can see here mounting and dismounting the um, micro SD card. You want to make sure your transceiver is off whenever you insert or remove an SD card. And it shows you here when you're looking at the face of the radio, it's on the left hand side. And that's how you put your SD card in. <clears throat> After we do the SD card preparation, we have to download the firmware. We've already done that. And then it says copy the firmware on the SD card uh, that has been previously formatted. And it says to go on the root, go to FTM 500D, and then copy the files there. And you should be good to go. And scrolling down, it tells you when you power up, hold the DSIP, DISP card and power switch to turn the transceiver on, and you're going to get this firm, firmware update screen. And we're going to go through that. And then it shows you how to use the dial to update anything that needs to be updated. There are going to be indicators letting you know what does and does not need to be updated. And then it tells you uh, do not remove the SD card or turn off the receiver while updating. If the update is interrupted, you could have problems. So we don't want to do that. And then after you do all of this stuff, you want to come down and do a factory reset. And we're going to cover that as well. All right, let's get started. First thing that we want to do is we want to check our current firmware. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push this button in. And that is going to take us to the menu. And I'm going to use the bottom button to rotate down to almost the end. And we are going to go into, and I think it's uh, in the reset. And I want to go here to 126, which is software version. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit that. And then you can see our main version is currently at 1.02. And we know that there's an update for that. The subversion is 102, and that is correct. And our DSP version is 7.2, which is correct. So we only have to update the main firmware. So let's go ahead and hit the back button here. And I'm looking on the screen instead of at the radio. And what I want to do now is I'm going to power off and I'm going to insert my SD card and I'm going to come right back. Okay, now my card is inserted and I'm going to go ahead and turn the radio back on. And when it comes up, what we want to do is we want to go and we want to format this card. So again, I'm going to hold this button down until I get to the menu. And then I'm going to scroll up until I get to the SD card submenu. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to select option 109 and we are going to format our card. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit this button and I'm going to switch over to format and I'm going to hit OK. And this might take a little bit of time. And it looks like our SD card formatted just fine. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to power off, we're going to take this card out, and then we are going to connect it to our computer. And we connect it to our computer to copy over the files that we discussed earlier today. Okay, so here you should be able to see two windows. The top window is the folder where we unzipped our files. The bottom window is the folder of our formatted SD card. So in our SD card, we have to come down to 500D, and then we have to go to this root directory right here. And that's where we want to copy these files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort these by type. And then I'm going to just simply highlight these three, right click, and I'm going to pick copy. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick paste. And then once that's done, I'm going to eject the card and then I'm going to insert it into my 500D. And then I'm going to turn the 500D on. So let's do that now. Okay, now our SD card is back in the radio. I want to hold DSP and I want to boot up. Now it says, insert the SD card containing the SFL files and select update and press dial. So I do that and I press the big dial. <clears throat> and then here you can see main is the only one that's highlighted because the other two are up to date already. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to push update and I hit the main dial. It's going to ask update. Okay. And here we go. It's updating.
Okay, and that took some time, so we're going to speed that up. So you just saw it faster than it really was. So now I'm going to hit OK. And it looks like the, the radio is doing a reboot, or maybe it just powered off. So let's turn it on. And what the instruction said was is that it, you need to do a factory reset. So let's press our menu button. And let's go down to factory reset. And then I'm going to come over here to OK. And so now it's going to do the factory reset. And now it's entering for me, it's asking me to enter my call sign. So let's just use the function number. And we're going to go A, A, A for the sake of brevity. Okay, after putting my call sign in, I want to press and hold this button. And now it's going to boot as it normally would. And we're going to press and hold this button. It looks like it's different. And then we're going to use this one to scroll to the end. And then we are going to scroll up to, actually, I think it's down at the bottom. Here we go. We're going to find 126 software version. I'm going to hit the button. And now you can see my main version has been updated to 1.0.6. And it's that simple, folks. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching.